Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is August 21st, 2021. Last week, we saw the S&P 500 pull back a bit and gave the market participants something to ponder. The sell-off was accelerated by the FOMC minute release on Wednesday. Then the typical buy the dippers came in on Thursday and started to push back up into Friday's monthly OPEX. During the week, we saw the dollar continue to move up Gold is trying to hold support and oil remains sluggish. In addition, we also saw the Chinese tech stock being sold off. In this video, we'll look at Alibaba, Maidu, JD.com, Tencent, and see are they at some sort of a bottom yet? And is it the time to look for a possible buy? In addition, we'll look at the US dollar, the 10 year yield, oil, gold, and the silver market, along with a weekly review of the SP 500 and other major market indexes, the market sentiment, and the market internal. A lot of stuff to talk about, so stay tuned and let's get going. On this weekly chart of the S&P 500, we noticed that there was a hangman type of weekly candle and it is actually an outside weak bearish candle. And we see that it is close above this, uh, you know, this lower wedge uh, trend line here. And it is inside of this wedge and came down, got a bounce off of it. Test was supported and is holding above this 10 week moving average and also this 40 week moving average. The week ended uh, only down about 0.6% or a little bit under 27 points. I believe the weekly range of 112 points scared the market participant more than the 0.6% uh, weekly loss or that 27 point loss. So looking at this chart here, the uh, Weekly price is still inside of this wedge and it is still above the 10 week and the 40 week moving average. So on a weekly basis, the trend remains to be up. Let me start out talking about the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500. And, uh, and then we talk about the QQQ. Then we go and look at the cash index. Remember on the SPY last week, I put out a video to, uh, and uh, here's the clip of the uh, the segment that I talk about the SPY and where we are, uh, you know, anticipating the price will go. Remember, we are talking about this uh, particular zone here, right? This uh, balance area. And we're saying that if it uh, come back into this balance area, then we're basically looking for it to potentially retrace back down to the other side of this balance area, which would be uh, somewhere around 436. So today it finally came. So as you can see, the uh, pullback occurred and it came down to this balance area, the lower end of this balance area. Got this pullback and now it's coming back up and essentially coming back above this, uh, this balance area here. So what we're basically are looking at now is to see would it be able to come up, fill this gap and uh, put in a new all time high. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I believe that we could see the uh, SPY and also the S&P 500 come up into this area here. Essentially, the SPY will come up and fill this gap. Now, whether we're going to make a new all-time high, that's a different question, and that is remain to be seen. But for now, you know, I am uh, anticipating that if the uh, SPY or the S&P 500 continue to move up next week, we could see these, uh, you know, this gap uh, on the SPY get filled. But if it uh, starts to pull back and come back in to this balance area, then once again, we're basically are looking at a look above and fail. And what that means is that it will come back down to the other side of this, uh, this balance area here. Okay, so let me uh, draw this back on. So basically come back down and take out this 436 once again. And this time, if it take out this low, then we be uh, looking at a lower high, lower low, and that could be the beginning of something more than a pullback. It will be of a uh, correction. Now, for some of you who might not uh, know the differentiation between a pullback and a correction. A pullback is a 10% or more from the recent high, okay, from the recent peak, basically from here. And a pullback is anything less than 10%. Right now, like last week, we only saw a 2.5% on the S&P 500 pullback. That's a pullback, right? It's not a correction. If it's a correction, we need to see the S&P 500 drop more than 10% or so. 
Okay, and we definitely haven't seen that for quite a while. So yeah, recently we just see these, you know, one, two, three percent at most. I'm not even sure we saw a three percent pullback recently. But anyway, we definitely have not seen any sort of a correction. Okay, so right now we're basically looking at these pullback and see how the price action will start telling us that the next pullback will turn into more than just a pullback and turn into a correction. Okay, so that's basically what I'm looking at is to see what it come up, pick out this uh, this gap here, you know, fill this gap and see would it be able to put in a new all time high. But as we come back in, you know, to this zone here, you know, this basically this balance area, then I'll be uh, looking for anything under 436. If it dip below 46, 436, then we have to be very careful. And looking at the QQQ, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, here's a clip from the earlier video on the price action that we are sort of anticipating or on the lookout for. And here looking at the QQQ, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, remember we're looking at this uh, particular balance area here, right? So right now, it seems like this is coming down here. So uh, keep an eye on this uh, level here, 361 area, right? 360, 150 area. To see when we uh, get a bounce here inside of this zone, if it doesn't so as you can see from this chart here, we did see the uh, QQQ came down to this uh, range here. You know, we traced back down and dipped to the uh, dip below it, as a matter of fact, and then bounced right back. And then we got a nice bounce up now. So right now we want to see would it be able to take out the upper uh, level of this range, this balance area, and move in to a uh, new all-time high. So if it uh, could make a new all-time high, and we essentially are looking at the uh, projection of a 1x range extension, right? But if it's unable to uh, break out and uh, take out the all-time high and start to come back down and take out this low here, then once again, similarly to what we are uh, saying about the S&P 500 ETF, the SPY, if it take out this low, then we will start looking for a potential you know, uh, start of a uh, correction instead of a pullback. So we just have to wait and see to see what the uh, price action is going to turn out in the coming week. So the critical point to watch for the QQQ is the all-time high level, okay? And also this low here, we need the 360. All right, now let's go and take a look at the daily uh, price action of the S&P 500. As you can see, the uh, price came down to this uh, lower end of this balance area, and now it is moving above it. So we're going to see whether it continue to move up and possibly put in a new all-time high. And if it doesn't put in a new all-time high and come back down, take out this low, then we will be uh, keeping an eye out for these levels here, that 141 extension at 43.38 and a 127 at 43.10. And eventually, we are basically monitoring these level at 42.55 or the 42.57, this uh, pivot high here. Okay, so keep an eye on that. And again, remember we uh, spoke earlier about the SPY. If it turned out to give us a lower low and a uh, lower high, then we essentially are looking at the possibility of a, uh, a correction in the making instead of a pullback. And here on the daily chart of the NASDAQ 100, and here's the high that we are looking for to see if it would be able to come up and get above that next week. If it doesn't, if it turns down, you know, reverse, turn out to reverse itself. And again, we basically are looking at this area here, which is this 127 extension of 14,584 in confluence with this trend line. And that would be the initial uh, downside target that we'll be uh, looking for. So if that's the case, then we basically are looking at a higher, uh, I mean a uh, lower high and a lower low. Okay, And that would also turn into something more than just a pullback. And it could be in the uh, beginning phase of a potential correction. And for the Russell 2000, we uh, talk about this uh, price action 
in the uh, previous video, and here's a clip of that on where I talk about uh, the price action of the Russell 2000, uh, this uh, balance area. So once again, I came down, you know, balance, and we're basically saying that uh, we're looking for this thing to come down to the uh, to the bottom of this uh, balance area and see what it get a bounce back up. And if it doesn't, if it break, then we're basically looking at two. So you can see that uh, it came down to this uh, lower uh, uh, boundary of this balance area here. Okay, now we're getting a little bit of a bounce. We want to see would it be able to bounce back up for the uh, you know 2297, take out the 2297 and break out of this uh, balance area to um, make its way up to put in a new all-time high. But if it failed to uh, get back above this 2195, and break below this low, essentially these lows here, right? And go below the 2075, then that could be uh, trouble ahead for the Russell 2000. And we'll be uh, basically looking at 1935, somewhere down in that range. And here's the Dow Jones Transportation. Again, we're saying that it needs to reclaim this 15,000. As you can see, it got close to it, but was unable to close above that 15,000 level and right now it seems to be pulling back again although we had a uh, inside day on friday we'll see what this thing uh, get a little bit of a blimp up and then come back down so we're going to keep an eye on it because there's still this declining trend line here that could pose some sort of resistance on the upside and if we could break out of this uh, trend line again you know this 15,000 will be uh, another uh, potential resistance for the dow jones transportation to overtake. So if it uh, reverses back down, look for this 14,242, get retested. It seems to have found quite a support here from the uh, previous uh, time that it uh, uh, came down to this level. So if it break this level this time around, then it'd be a bit of a bearish move on the Dow Jones Transportation. And I'd be uh, watching for this level here at 13,656. And here's the Dow Jones Industrial. Again, here's a uh, short clip of the uh, Dow Jones Industrial from the previous video. Essentially, this is like a uh, look above and fail. So we expect to uh, look for a retracement back down unless it could uh, pop back out, you know, do uh, something uh, like this. But if it... Uh, you can see right now the Dow Jones Industrial is trying to break out of this balance area and uh, possibly move up to uh, a new all-time high. So we're going to see will the uh, Dow Jones Industrial move up and would it be able to get up above that high. If it doesn't, then it form a lower high and come back into this balance area, then I expect it to uh, work itself down to these uh, lower le level here. And once it break and come down to this 33,000 area or take out this low, then we essentially have a lower high, lower low have a price action, then again, we'd be uh, start looking for potential correction instead of just these uh, little bit of a pullback. Just look at this uh, 33,000 level could also be in confluence with this lower cha you know, channel trend line here for the Dow Jones Industrial. Now let's take a look at the 10-year yield. As you can see, the 10-year yield came up a bit last week it's sort of you know kind of in this little consolidation range hovering between you know uh, 13 and this uh, 12 10 area so basically 1.3 you know 1.2 area so we'll see what the yields start coming back up and uh, you know work toward the uh, 1.4 level or will it come back down and dip below this uh, 1.2 and take out these low um, my guess is that it uh, probably will work itself up toward the uh, higher level. Well, my expectation is to uh, uh, hear more talk about early tapering and potential uh, rate height before the end of the year from the Fed. So that will uh, put this uh, yield on a, a little bit more upward uh, trajectory in the, uh, in the near future. So keep an eye on that. Of course, anything is possible. The Fed could always, you know, tell you something else uh, than what they are planning to do. You just try to calm the market. 
And here's the U.S. dollar. Remember, I was saying that uh, watch that 93 and a half. And uh, when it get to this 94, we're basically in that level that I wouldn't be surprised for the Fed I to, you know, talk out of both ends of the stick, you know, talking about tapering and they don't want to have the dollar too strong. So they're going to also try to talk down the dollar at the same time. So there's, you know, it's going to be a little bit uh, tough for the Fed, you know, to try to balance out. So, but uh, right now the dollar is uh, looking strong here and I wouldn't be surprised to see this 94 level uh, to get uh, tagged. Remember, I was saying that uh, once you get into this uh, 92 zone here, then we'd be watching for this 94. So we'll see what happens in the coming week with the Jackson Hole uh, sort of virtual summit. So with a strong dollar, we could also expect weak oil prices, right? You know, so again, you know, the oil price is tagged to uh, its pay to the U.S. dollar. So as the dollar gains strength, then the oil price uh, typically will, uh, will fall a bit. But also in addition to that, we have this Delta variant on COVID-19 that a lot of people is uh, worried about. Maybe we have another, you know, a lockdown or, or retreat from the reopening. But I don't think that's going to make that much of a difference. I think the reopening will continue to occur, maybe in a slower pace. So the oil price to me is not more of a supply or demand issue right now. Uh, it could turn out to be later on. But right now, I think it's more tied to the U.S. dollar. The strength of the U.S. dollar is most, what's driving the oil price more than the supply and demand or the concern about the reopening and the slowing down of the economy. And here looking at silver, remember I was saying that uh, when it got a nice bounce off of this low year and coming up, I said, you know, I'm going to look for a retest of this $22.72 area. So I'm still waiting for this thing to come down to see what it come and test this zone and see what kind of price action it is and see what it be a uh, worthwhile to uh, take a look at a potential swing long back up to this uh, 24 uh, 70 area. So I'm still kind of on the sideline watching the price action on the uh, uh, silver price. Right now is not the time to pull the trigger yet. I'm still waiting for it to set up. And here looking at gold, you know, gold came back up to uh, 1800 level and close to this 1804. I did not anticipate gold to bounce back up that much because I'm still looking for gold to come back down and retest these levels down here. And, you know, between this uh, uh, 1716 and uh, 1670 uh, dollar level. So I'm still waiting for gold to come back and uh, retest this zone. Now let's go and take a look at the ES, the E mini S&P 500 future. And let me tell you uh, why I believe the S&P 500 will see a slightly higher high than what we've seen right now. So, and, uh, and see, is it possible that we could see a, another new all-time high from the S&P 500? Now let's take a look at the market profile chart on the ES, the E mini S&P 500 and see why I'm saying that uh, we could see the S&P 500 potentially go up and test the all-time high. If it doesn't, then at least you're going to get close to it. The uh, reason why is looking at the single print, especially these up here on August 16, the single print, you know, eventually the ES will come up and tag this single print. So when it come up and tag the single print, what is the momentum and what is the price action? Will there be a strong enough price action to actually push it to, to this high here? So if the ES makes a new high, then most likely the S&P 500 will also make a new high. And in addition to that, we also have some of these single print up here. So that's why I'm also looking for the ES, I mean the S&P 500 to come up and you know fill these uh, uh, single print when the ES fill the single print, we see we will uh, see the S&P 500 come up and fill that gap that it has left open. Okay, so depending on how this uh, gap is being filled and what is the price action, what is the momentum at the time, and if the momentum is strong, we could see another new all-time high from the S&P 500. 
Now let's take a look at the sentiment chart here on the S&P 500. As you can see on S&P 500, on Friday it closed up almost 36.1%. You see the VIX came back down from the uh, inside of the 20 level, above the 20 level, down to 18.56 on Friday. And also the put call ratio, it was up above 0.75 and closed at 0.69 on Friday. So apparently the market participant all of a sudden you know, got to change your heart and become a little bit more complacent and a little bit uh, less fearful now and starting to put on risk once again. And for the up-down volume ratio, we actually see a, a little bit of an improvement there on Friday with 3.17 times more up volume than down volume. And also the advancing issue outnumbered the declining issue by 1,419. Now here is the... Uh, not so good looking uh, chart here is the new high, new low. You can see the uh, new 52 week low outnumber the new 52 week high in the New York Stock Exchange by amount of 21. There were only 80 new high, but 101 new low. So even though the cumulative advanced decline line came up a bit, but if we are still looking at a negative divergence between the uh, AD line and the S&P 500. And for the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ 100 closed almost up 159 point over 1%, 1.06%. And the up-down volume ratio, two and a half times more up volume than down volume. And the advancing issue outnumbered the decline in issue by 1,671. So that is respectable. But once again, here is the ugliness, is the new high, new low. There were only 71 new 52-week high but 266 new low. And so that the uh, new low outnumbered the new high by a margin of 195 with more new low while the uh, market or the index is up, you know, over 150 points. That is uh, pretty telling on uh, how weak it is in this move. And here, once again, although we are seeing a little bit of an upside move on the AD line in the NASDAQ market, Notice the negative divergence between the AD line and the NASDAQ 100 still persists. And here's a heat map for the S&P 500 on Friday. For Friday, you can see NVIDIA continue to move up and it was up over 5%. And also Apple, Microsoft also have a uh, huge day on Friday. It was up 2.5%. Right? Then we also see Google, Facebook also up a percent or so. So all in all, it was quite, uh, you know, spread out in terms of the, uh, the gaining issue and it uh, showed in the advanced decline number that we saw. Right? So uh, we got the uh, financial participating and also the, uh, uh, you know, the biotech or the uh, pharmaceutical. So, and uh, of course, the, uh, you know, the semiconductors kind of mixed back on the semiconductors. Right. The applied material and land research, the equipment maker, you know, took a hit. Right. And uh, Intel was also took a little bit of a hit. But NVIDIA, Qualcomm, AMD, you know, so they uh, sort of uh, help hold up the semiconductor. And uh, again, you know, so it's basically is mainly uh, tech driven again, although we are seeing uh, some other sector being, uh, you know, participating in this rally. And also Tesla kind of got a bit on uh, Friday and it was up uh, 1%. And here's the uh, heat map for the NASDAQ 100. So you can see mixed bag in the semiconductor. But other than that, it's uh, pretty much the uh, large cap tech stock, the, uh, what we call the, uh, the FANG plus stock, right? Now let's go take a look at those Chinese stock, uh, Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, and JD.com and see all day at a... Uh, possible bottom and is it time to uh, to buy these stocks recently we heard a lot of talk and we also saw in the price action of a lot of these large cap chinese stocks and the price action have been on the downside and that is due to the uh, clamping down by the chinese government on a lot of these uh, tech stocks so let's go and take a look at alibaba you see on this weekly chart we see alibaba came off from this high here up at the 320 level all the way down to the present level under uh, 150, uh, 158 and uh, close on Friday at 157.96.
But this weekly level, I see that there could be a potential support down here, somewhere around this 142. If it doesn't find support or won't be able to bounce back up to this uh, daily zone here, we switch over to the daily. Because I see there could be a possible daily support here. If we uh, look back way back here in uh, October or uh, September 2019. So it uh, came down and tried to come back up. If it doesn't uh, come back up to this zone, then watch for this weekly uh, zone to get tested. Uh, we could see Alibaba come down to this 142. Now, if we zoom in on a 30 uh, minute chart here, you can see that there were some buying uh, occur uh, right into the close on Friday, right? If we zoom this in here. So I would uh, wait until it come up here and then pushes back down to see what it finds support in this zone. Is that really there are some standing buying order waiting to, uh, you know, get filled on the upside? If it doesn't, and if there's not uh, much of any uh, standing buy order, and I'd be looking for the price to continue to move down for that uh, weekly zone, that 142 area, uh, you know. But I will wait until Alibaba come up and find some sort of resistance. I anticipate that it could encounter some sort of resistance up at this 160, 161 area, and then possibly push back down. So essentially, you're looking for something come down here, then probably uh, you know, look for a uh, a long if there are some buyers. You know, these buy orders still need to get filled. Then look for it to come back up, whatever this peak is. You know, to uh, at least get above that peak and possibly play it up here to uh, this particular peak. So essentially, that's what I'm looking for. And uh, keep an eye out on Alibaba. So don't rush in on Alibaba yet. Although it's kind of tempting for it to drop that much. That I say, yeah, that might be a uh, opportunity to buy on the dip. Now, if you're trading short term, then that might be the case. Then you could, uh, you know, buy here and play it up to uh, this potential resistance or even, uh, you know, up at this level here. And then with the uh, stop loss right underneath this low here, that would be a play, a possible play for the short term. The other one is Baidu. Baidu has also uh, been a hammer. Look at this, Baidu. Wow. You know, this is like up at the 360 level, all the way down to 137.65 on Friday. Uh, you know, and right now it seems to be trying to hold this uh, this level here on a daily basis, but it doesn't hold on this daily uh, support level. Then I'll be uh, looking at this uh, weekly support zone down here at 121 area. So let's go and take a look at the daily price action here. So this is the uh, a little bit of a balance area that uh, you know as close as possible to the uh, recent price here. So if it could hold inside of this zone and get a bounce, then we could look for a potential play back on the upside. But if it doesn't hold, then I'd be uh, looking for the price to continue to move down to this weekly uh, uh, zone here on this balancing area. You know this uh, this balance zone for the from the weekly. And if we uh, zoom in on the 30-minute uh, uh, chart, well, we are seeing a little bit of a buying activity on Friday. So right now, we're basically waiting for this thing to come up. You know, see, would it be able to come up to this 140 level and then make it uh, back down? Then be uh, looking for a uh, swing long or, you know, the, that if there are still uh, standing buy order over here to push it back up, then basically looking to whatever this peak is to at least play it up and target that particular peak. But if it doesn't hold its zone, then we're basically looking for this thing to come down, continue to come down to possibly maybe through the uh, 132 and then back to this uh, weekly uh, zone here, right? Down here at this uh, level, somewhere around 122 for Baidu. Another one of these Chinese tech stock is JD.com. Here on this weekly chart, I have a weekly zone down here, the support zone down at 33 level. So if it doesn't hold this support zone up on the 30 support zone, somewhere up at the 64, then i uh be uh, watching for this uh, uh, JD.com price to come down possibly to this uh, 33 level. Yeah, it is kind of drastic, but 
hey, it is what it is, what the chart is telling me. But yeah, there could be some uh, intermediate support on its way down. And that is what I'm looking for if it's going to come down to this uh, price level. Now, here's the daily uh, support zone here. Basically, I uh, see it uh, try to bounce right now. So if it could bounce back up, then we'd be uh, looking at this uh, you know, near-term 30-minute uh, uh, intraday chart here. See this price action come up uh, a little resistant here. So, uh, you know, it could, we, we did see some buying here throughout, uh, you know, into the close on Friday. So I'd be uh, watching to see what the uh, pullback here in this area here on this 30-minute uh, uh, support zone. So if it come down here, then probably we'll uh, look for a possible uh, uh, long setup to see would it be able to come back to the 65 level. But if it continue to break to below the 61, then I'd be looking at that possibility of going down to that weekly uh, price zone uh, down at 33. And, uh, you know, all bets are off on the long side and probably would be looking for some sort of short setup. And that would be another story. We'll keep an eye on this and see how it will react. But uh, I'd be uh, watching this uh, level here somewhere around 62 and a half. And the other one is 10 cents. That is also being hammered as well. As you can see on this weekly uh, uh, support zone, I have it down here somewhere around $38, 37 you know, $38, that area here. So, and here is the daily uh, price zone. And going to the uh, daily chart, we can see that this price zone is sitting somewhere around 54. So if the price doesn't hold this uh, daily price zone, then I expect it to come down to this 38 level in the weekly support zone. And I notice that uh, we're getting a little bit of a bounce. And if we zoom in on a 30 minute chart here, as you can see on Friday, we got a nice bounce off from the uh, Thursday close. And right now, basically I'm looking for it to come back down to see, is this a uh, really uh, some standing uh, buy order here to uh, support the price to go back up or not? If it uh, come down and get a bounce, then I'd be uh, looking for a uh, long setup to play it back at least up at this level here. But if it doesn't hold this uh, 52 area, then I'd be uh, looking at it for the uh, price to uh, continue to come down to this level here in the weekly zone of 38 and possibly look at there, uh, you know, for some uh, potential uh, uh, long setup. But in the meantime, that's basically the one looking for on 10 cents and all the other uh, Chinese stock that I just uh, went to, Baba, uh, Baidu, and JD.com. So if you're new to this channel or you have not subscribed yet, then click the subscribe button to help support this channel. And be sure to click on that notification icon so you won't miss any future video from me. And make sure to press that thumbs up to give it a like to help me promote and share this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.